Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to celebrate the release of the brand new Doom Eternal. I figured it'd be a good time to take a look back on the Doom franchise as a whole, where it came from, and how it got there. Now, going back to 1992, id Software, which was a brand new company at the time, and only really under its belt created a platformer called Commander Keen, decided that they wanted to test out their brand new uh, game engine, a pseudo 3D game engine, and uh, the decision was made to remake one of their favorite PC, or I should say computer games, from 1981 called Castle Wolfenstein. And so Wolfenstein 3D came out in 1992 as probably the first commercially successful first-person shooter, uh, certainly helping to establish the genre as something that could be marketable. Uh, despite the name, Wolfenstein 3D is not actually 3D uh, due to a frankly ingenious uh, rendering design. It manages to simulate a 3D appearance while being technically a top-down shooter. The game features a flat grid-like design. You can't aim up and down or crouch and jump. It also features a generally slow gameplay uh, around navigating labyrinth-like mazes with limited resources, both outmanned and outgunned, on top of all which the player had a limited number of lives. Uh, this did help establish, like I said, the first-person shooter, which at the time was also known as a sprite shooter, and had many clones that emulated the design. Uh, when it came time to develop their next title, id Software decided to establish their own IP. And so Doom was created in 1993. It was released in three chapters, uh... First was Knee Deep in the Dead, which was free, available via shareware. Basically, uh, a floppy or CD would pop up in a magazine or another uh, computer accessory that you purchased for free, and would then come with instructions on how to uh, purchase the other chapters via mail order. The other chapters being The Shores of Hell and Inferno. A lot of advancements were made to Doom over Wolfenstein 3D. Uh, despite still not technically being a 3D game, despite often being credited as it, uh, they were able to simulate angled walls at varying levels, and had lifts and stairs. It also sped up the gameplay considerably, giving players unlimited lives, although you would still lose all of your weapon and ammo when you died. But uh, resources like ammo, health, and armor were plentiful. To compensate for this, there were lots and lots of enemies around. Uh, the player generally moved much faster, and the game was very light on plot in comparison. As such, Doom was probably the first real run-and-gun shooter that was ever made. Originally, it was planned to be an adaptation of the film Aliens, and it was also heavily inspired by the Evil Dead. The game featured non-linear open design, where players had to explore to find keys and hidden secrets. Players could also find secret levels that were extra challenging. In 1994, uh, due to the success of Doom in 93, uh, id Software decided to do their first full retail release. This time it was a sequel, Doom 2 Hell on Earth. Built on the same engine, it featured 30 new, brand new levels with a host of new enemies, such as the Revenant and the Mancubus and Archwile. It also had beefed up versions of existing enemies like the Chain Gunner and the Pain Elemental and even easier versions of old bosses like the Hell Knight and the Arachnatron to flesh things out. To help compensate these newer, tougher enemies, the player is given a double-barreled shotgun known as the Super Shotgun. Not much changed gameplay-wise, which was a core element of criticism for the game at the time. It, a lot of critics claim that it felt more like an expansion than a brand new title. In 1995, id Software decided to do a retail release of the original game, this time called The Ultimate Doom. This version would have all three episodes along with a bonus new one called Thy Flesh Consumed. These nine levels came from the original designers, uh, but had nothing new for the original game. It was basically just a challenge level with harder enemies and uh, considerably, a considerably greater number of them. Uh, the expansion was created to combat the criticism that the games had been too easy. The Ultimate Doom was ported to a number of home consoles, including the Super Nintendo, the Jaguar, the 3DO, and the Sega 32X. Perhaps the most famous version of home console Doom was the PlayStation Doom. The PlayStation Doom 
feature the levels from the Jaguar, which were streamlined versions that were designed to function a little cleaner on home consoles. On top of which, it added uh, nearly all the stages from Doom 2. Uh, while a number of stages were removed, they did add a number of brand new stages to the package as well. So you got about 59 levels all in one Doom package. PlayStation Doom also mixed elements from Doom 2 into Doom 1, most notably the enemies who would appear then in both levels. It would also allow you to get a double barreled shotgun in Doom 1 stages, although it's in a secret stage much later in the levels. Another new effect for the game was colored lighting, taking advantage of some of the processing power of the home consoles. It featured reworked sound design from the ground up, including enemies, weapons, and even the complete soundtrack. This version had a greater emphasis on horror and atmosphere than the original release. Uh, between all these changes, the PlayStation Doom is considered, for all intents and purposes, worth playing and a completely different version of the Doom experience. Later on, uh, because of the popularity of Doom, some expansions were made. First, there was the Master Levels, which was released in 95, it featured 20 new user made levels that were extremely challenging. A year later, in 96, two more expansions were released for Doom 2, called TNT Evolution and the Plutoni Experiment, each with 32 new, exceedingly challenging user-made levels. Uh, these new levels were then uh, packaged together as Final Doom and officially released by id Software. In 1997, saw the release of Doom 64. Developed by Midway for the Nintendo 64, it was built from the PlayStation version and featured the same soundtrack. It also upgraded the enemy sprites, and introduced the Nightmare Imp and a new boss, the Mother Demon. A brand new weapon called the Unmaker also made its debut. It featured 32 brand new levels with dark atmospheric design and a much greater emphasis on horror, taking advantage of the Nintendo 64's technical specifications. It's also considered an official sequel to Doom. A special version was made for PC release called Doom 64 Total Conversion. This upscaled the title to work on modern systems. The same version was ported for digital release later as a pre-order bonus for Doom Eternal. This version even features a new ending that connects more solidly with the new games. The early 2000s saw the return of Wolfenstein, a classic franchise resurrected using newer technology and redesigned for a modern gaming era. Because of its success, it wasn't long before id Software decided to bring back Doom in 2004 as Doom 3. Have them on radar, sir. They'll be landing in a few moments. Excellent. See that Counselor Swan is sent directly to me. Yes, sir. Tower, Dark Star on final. We've got you, Dark Star. You are set for lockdown. Like Doom 64 featured a more horror based atmospheric level design and linear levels as well. It had a detailed story with cutscenes that generally seemed tailored to be a remake of the original game. It's the first actually 3D Doom title. Players could aim in any direction, crouch, and jump. It also featured many modern designs like re reloading weapons and a flashlight needed to see in the dark. It's heavily inspired by titles like Half-Life and System Shock. Despite being criticized for its dramatic stylistic departure from the original games, it was still critically successful. Uh, so much that it received a single-player expansion in the form of Resurrection of Evil. Uh, it also had a special edition called the BFG Edition released in 2012 for the Xbox 360 and PC, which added a single-player story called The Lost Mission, which was originally cut content for the original game. In 2005, a collector's edition of Doom 3 released for the Microsoft Xbox came with PC-accurate ports of the Ultimate Doom and Doom 2 Hell on Earth. In 2006, the same Ultimate Doom was released again to the Xbox Live arcade service. In 2010, Doom 2 joined it along with the Master Levels and a, set of, a brand new set of stages called No Rest for the Living. In 2012, both were included with the Doom 3 B BFG edition, released on 360 and PC. Now, that same year, the Doom Classic Complete Collection was released for the Sony PlayStation 3. This set came with Ultimate Doom... Doom 2 Hell on Earth, The Master Levels, Final Doom, and No Rest for the Living, making it the most co complete collection to date on home consoles. In 2019, the classic Doom, Doom 2, and Doom 3 were all re-released digitally on Sony PlayStation 4 after the Doom Classic Collection was taken down from the PlayStation Store. 
While the ultimate Doom was complete as always, Doom 2 was a bare-bones version, with only the master levels. These games have since had a number of WADs released for downloading, including Sigil for the original game, which was a WAD developed by John Romero, who was one of the original creators. A WAD, by the way, being short for Where's All the Data, and basically a reference to new maps designed for an existing game engine. And the rest of the add-ons for Doom 2, including Final Doom and No Rest for the Living, uh, with more WADs presumably to follow, making the newer digital releases even more complete than ever. Following Doom 3, there was plans for a sequel, Doom 4, that was to take place on Earth, again following similar pattern to the original games, but the initial feedback to the game wasn't so good because it resembled more Doom 3 than the classic Doom, so the project was scrapped. In 2016, 12 years later, I'm willing to take full responsibility for the horrible events of the last 24 hours, but you must understand. Our interest in their world was purely for the betterment of mankind. Everything has clearly gotten out of hand now, yes. But it was worth the risk, I assure you. Uh, id Software finally revisited Doom franchise again, this time making a new game that was more faithful to the spirit of the original titles. Like the classic games, the new Doom would emphasize mobility in combat and non-linear level design. The title saw a lot of returning enemies and weapons, with a slew of new ones. It had deep customization elements that allowed players to alter the functionality of their gear. In addition, new Doom featured arena levels, like what you would see in Quake but these were often criticized by players for breaking up the action and making the gameplay somewhat redundant. Anyone, if you can hear me, if you're out there. Attempting to acquire the Hellpriest signal. Nearly 60% of our planet has been consumed by the invaders. We have the Hell Priest signal locked in. The target is marked, but the signal will not hold for long. For it is he that they fear, not man, or his armies. They fear the mark of the beast. of course, saw the release of Doom Eternal. This is a direct sequel to the previous title. Doom Eternal takes everything the previous game did to the next level, including more monsters, more weapons, and even more mobility, which led to some pretty in-depth platforming segments. The previous required arena segments are now optional and used for unlocking the Unmaker, the weapon that made its debut in, Nintendo six in Doom 64. The story for Doom Eternal goes even further into patching the newer games into the classic ones, confirming that the Doom Slayer is in fact the Doom guy that we played as many years ago. Having been pulled into another dimension for his never-ending battle against the forces of Hell. Doom has come a long way over the years. It's evolved a lot, uh, but every Doom title has been fun to play and is highly recommended for picking up and trying out. So I hope you found this video informative. I largely made it as an apology for not doing any Let's Plays this week, but... Uh, I've been wanting to make this anyway, so I hope you enjoyed, I hope you found it informative, so until next time, take it easy.